everybody welcome from me Jack and I want to show you probably the most influential car I've ever owned for me the most significant car alongside the Influenza this is number 27 I owned this car uh, I sold it about three years ago and it's now on its way to Australia so I wanted to do a goodbye video because at the time I sold it my channel was a little bit dormant so I didn't do anything to sort of show that. And when I bought it, it was actually cobalt blue, which is a, a rather nice Porsche color. The atomic number of cobalt is 27. And the first videos that I ever did on the channel were about this very car. So you can see now where the title came from. It's not a particularly good story, but at least now you know. But I really want to tell you a little bit about this because it is hugely significant and it is no normal 964. Seeing it again, I think that Kendall, who bought the car, got himself a bit of a bargain, to be honest. It is such a nice car. Uh, and, my oh God, isn't it, doesn't it, doesn't it look amazing? In this video, I'm going to tell you how I managed to spend over £40,000 on this car, getting it to the state it is today. I'm going to tell you about the engine rebuild. I'm going to tell you about the full bare metal repaint and the change of colour. I'm going to tell you about the crash that happened only a couple of weeks after that. And... I'm going to tell you about the ethos behind the car, so the weight reduction and the change from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, which is really pretty unique to this 964. Others have been converted, but not in the same way as this one. When I first got this, it was a pretty standard 964 C4, as I said, in um, cobalt Porsche, cobalt blue, and it looked like quite a pretty car. It was nice. It had some bigger alloys on it. Um, but still in the sort of cup one shape. Um, I can't remember what they were called, uh, some kind of replica, but it looked like a very nice car. However, pretty, I, I, it wasn't long before it became quite obvious that it needed an engine rebuild. It wasn't smoking when I built it, but soon after, I don't know if it was a year after, something along those lines, it started smoking quite drastically and I knew that it needed to be rebuilt. Now I paid just £10,000 for this car originally and that was at the time when 964s were still worth absolutely nothing and nobody wanted them. It's the longest car I've ever owned. Uh, in terms, Well, not longest car, it's the car I've owned the longest. Um, so I think altogether it was eight or ten years that I had this. Um, but the first thing was an engine rebuild and as part of the rebuild the spec of the, the engine was changed. So we went with cup cams, bypass pipe, chip, and a few other goodies. So that the engine should be putting out close to 300 horsepower, and it definitely feels like it. It feels really healthy. Um, 964 engines, I think, are really, really underrated. I think that they're so flexible, they're revvy, they sound great. The only thing is, they don't look very good. But apart from that, they are, I think they're awesome engines. It is a shame that almost all of them need a rebuild when you get close to 100,000 miles, but um, I guess that's the way for a lot of cars as well. Having the engine rebuilt was really only the very start of the story. I decided quite early on that I wanted to make a car which, was, um, which had a real lightweight ethos. So through my build of this 964, my main priority has always been to reduce weight. Thus, the bonnet, for example, is carbon fiber. When it was repainted, I did a, a delete on the sunroof, which saves 16 kilograms, but from the very top of the car, which makes a huge difference. The battery that I used originally it has a normal battery now, but it was a lithium battery. Absolutely everything I did in the interior as well. I sort of, I wanted it to remain usable, but in everything I did, I always looked for a way to, to save weight. So even with the shocks, for example, which are Intrax K2s, I wanted to make sure I could get alloy body shocks because for a lot of these cars, you can't. Because of the McPherson strut, um, they tend to be steel bodied, which weigh more. Uh, also, the wheels that it had originally, which were Japanese wheels, I bought them because they were the lightest possible. After lots of, lots of bits and bobs, the suspension, the engine rebuild, I decided that it needed a repaint. There were a couple of little rust bubbles here and there. It wasn't bad at all, but I wanted to make this car really special to me. So I went for a full bare metal rebuilt and decided to go for this color. Now this is actually an official Porsche color, but it's quite rare. It looks a bit like uh, maritime blue, which is what the RSs actually came with, but it is not that. It is different. It's got a, it's a bluer, it doesn't have the sort of um, purple shade or purple tint that maritime has. This is called Adriatic Blue. And 
on the repaint, I did other modifications to the bumpers, tried to streamline it a bit, and you know, I thought the car looked great. Heartbreakingly, I then took it to Spa for a weekend with the guys, and at the time we had a really nice group of people who were all into 964s, and that's how I met a lot of the friends that I have today in the car world. Anyway, we went to Spa, I took it there, had a brilliant first day. On the second day, I was with an instructor, and I was braking at the end of the straight of Camel, so probably got up to about 130 miles an hour, braking, and as I was braking hard, suddenly the rear end, this must have been at over 100 miles an hour, just completely locked up. The car spun round, really, it was, it was terrifying. Went off, sideswiped the barrier, twisted round and hit the barrier again. Now, the instructor who was with me said, no, that's a brake failure, you're braking a straight line, it's got to be that. Well, I didn't find out till later. I brought it back to the UK and I did find, we did some testing, um, that the rear ABS circuit was locked. So once the ABS kicked in, it took away the power, but it locked the rear wheels and didn't release them. So that's why I had that crash. And that was, um, that was a lesson, I think, that I learned, is uh, don't, go, don't make a car completely mint if you're going to be tracking it um, immediately afterwards. When it was finished, we did eventually weigh this car, and I think I managed to save about 125 kilos from standard. A big, big part of that was actually the conversion from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive. Ordinarily, what happens with these cars is that you find the gearbox from a two-wheel drive 964, or even better, a six-speed from a 993, and you literally take the whole four-wheel drive gubbins out, you replace the gearbox, and then you have a two-wheel drive car. Always thought that was a bit of a waste because this has an electronic system. So the rear diff is a um, limited slip diff, but it's actually, it's a plate limited slip diff. So it's a really good diff and it's governed electronically. And it'd be such a shame to junk the gearbox and drivetrain um, just because you want to make it two wheel drive and power the rear wheels only. The problem is it's a three differential car. So simply taking the drive shafts out, for example, to the front wheels wouldn't work. The car just wouldn't move. So we had to look at a system of blocking off that center differential. We had to make a custom sort of um, plate that would go onto that, stop the center differential from working as a differential and just transfer drive to the rear and then hope that that electronically governed rear limited slip diff, slip diff would continue to work. It did all work, it took quite a bit longer than I hoped, but um, we got it done in the end, and again, Nick at Red Tech helped me with that. So he designed that collar, we got it manufactured and did it all. And um, it's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, a six speed is probably the ultimate conversion for one of these, but six speed gearbox is about 5,000 pounds. And I think I worked out in the end that the conversion cost me about £2,000 with all the bits and everything else that we did, including putting a short shifter, other things like that. Um, and I have to tell you, it really does transform 964s. You can get C4s to handle nicely, but you can never quite get the live feel, the uncorrupted steering that you get from the C2s. Um, that's due to the lack of weight, to the rear wheel drive, but it also it actually felt faster because, because it was lighter, but also because there was less drag in the transmission. So that is probably the best mod and what I would do to any C4 if I ever owned one, really. going to be doing anything silly today because this is someone else's car who's in another continent and it's leaving tomorrow for Australia so the last thing I want to do is have something go wrong but so I'm just going to give you some impressions but being back in it is really well it's incredible and what's most incredible is just how good it is it's much better than I remembered it feels so together and so tight and the suspension is solid but with the cushion ride Whoever, whoever did this car must have done a really good job. Um, but yeah, no, it is, it's, it's great. It's, um, it's so nice to be in it again. These engines are creamy smooth, but they're torquey, but they're revvy. They are just, they are really the whole package. 
they do, although they sound good, they maybe don't sound as spectacular as some of the other engines, the Ferrari engines and things of that kind, but they do still really do sound amazing. These seats weren't in the car when I got it. I had some Corbos. These are much, much nicer looking. These are replicas for 964 RSs. They're really good quality. The one thing I would say about them, and the reason why I didn't go for them, they're basically Recaro pole positions, and I am pretty slim, and they're still too narrow for me, so I wouldn't have been able to live with them. Um, but they do make the car look a lot nicer. That is absolutely true. I think if I had to go back, one of the big issues I had with this is that it wasn't perfect on the road because it's slightly too harsh in a lot of situations but also it wasn't a very good track car and I should have gone one way or the other really I should have gone for either a road car or a track car and let me tell you if you're thinking of having a 964 as a track car my advice is don't the thing is they just they're not going to keep up with the modern stuff you'll get hot hatches you know blowing past you and trying to get them to go faster is incredibly expensive so they just don't make good track cars the only situation in which they're nice on track is when you're with other 964s or other 911s and you know that tends to happen maybe once or twice a year so it doesn't make sense so i wish i'd gone for a little bit more of a road biased approach with this um but i'm still really impressed with it to be honest and i'm blowing my own trumpet because it's my own car and i built it but it's really good um now a lot of you will be thinking, well, do you regret selling it? And uh, obviously ending up with a car which is a mountain of trouble, which is the Influenza. Well, I didn't get the Influenza directly after this, but actually it was the money from this car that allowed me to get the Influenza. And no, I don't regret having this, uh, selling this. Um, I mean, it, you know, I had it for a long time. I had a lot of stuff to it. And ultimately, for me, it wasn't working in one way or the other. And the Influenza has brought me a lot of other bonuses really I've learned a lot and it's helped with the channel a lot I will definitely miss this one last thing actually the reason why I sold it I never quite got on with the handling of these um, once I'd finished with it and I took it on track I did have a lot of fun but the rear it, I know some people absolutely love them and think they're amazing but personally I don't think that I don't like the rear engine biased handling the fact that you have to sort of break all the way into the corner then put your foot out I I just don't like it I prefer a car which is a bit more balanced and that you can sort of throw in a corner and get feeling from both ends and for me 911s just you know they just don't do that um, so I guess that was part of the issue as well but um, it's been so nice catching up with uh, 27 again I am slightly sad that it's ending up on the other side of the world, but I know that Kendall loves it, and I know he's gonna, you know, he's gonna do a lot with it and uh, enjoy it. So that's the main thing, I think. Um, but so nice to catch up with it. If you want to see other videos on this car, there's loads of stuff on the playlist about the, how I did the conversion. The last one I think was the track day, where you can see what it was like. I've, I've had a great time with that, and I drove it hard, as unlike today. And um, yeah, so have a look at that. Have a look at all my other videos. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. My Instagram is, is this. If you want to contact me, that's the best way. And um, yeah, thanks to Auto Farm for getting the car out and letting me drive it just before it goes. And see you all soon.